You know the story. A perfectly normal person suddenly catches on fire and poof, they're gone. For years, spontaneous human combustion, or SHC, has baffled scientists and amateur paranormal investigators alike. Like any other paranormal phenomenon, there are a number of logical explanations for spontaneous human combustion. Whether or not you believe them, on the other hand, is entirely up to you. The Burning Question It takes a lot of energy to burn a human body. According to body-burning experts, because those guys definitely exist, it takes somewhere between 1400 and 1800 degrees Fahrenheit to cremate a human being. That's a lot hotter than a match, candle, or cigarette, the usual suspects in a case of SHC. And yet, according to a survey from the Journal of Clinical Forensic Medicine, suspected cases of spontaneous human combustion completely reduce the victim's body to ash. Good night, sweet prince. Even stranger, the victim's surroundings in these cases usually don't burn, even if they consist of flammable materials, which seems counterintuitive given how intense the necessary fires must be. Human Candles There's actually a widely accepted theory that explains away almost everything about spontaneous combustion. It's a phenomenon called the wick effect, which says that the human body can act sort of like a candle under the right conditions. According to the theory, if a person's clothing catches on fire by, say, a stray cinder from a nearby fireplace or a dropped cigarette, the heat can split the skin and melt the victim's body fat. The fat becomes a source of fuel that keeps the fire going, like an oil lamp. If you've ever had a grease fire in your kitchen, it's basically like that, except with a person. <laughs> Heated debate The wick effect explains most spontaneous human combustion cases, but not all of them. And as anything that's possibly paranormal, there are a number of alternate theories out there. Researcher Brian J. Ford argues that it may be caused by ketosis, a condition that often happens in people with drinking problems in which a glucose-starved body starts feeding on fat. Ketosis increases the body's acetone levels, and since acetone is flammable, the person is more likely to catch on fire. Other theories aren't so reasonable. At least one scientist thinks that ball lightning, a largely unexplained scientific phenomenon, might cause SHC. Some paranormal researchers even think that SHC might be related to poltergeists. Those are interesting theories, but come on, it's obviously Aragorn every time. Rise to Flame one of the most famous modern cases of spontaneous human combustion occurred in 1951, when a 67-year-old widow named Mary Reeser died in a mysterious fire in her St. Petersburg, Florida apartment. The mysterious fire propelled the city of St. Petersburg into the national spotlight and attracted the attention of amateur sleuths all over the country. But there may be a perfectly logical explanation for Reeser's demise. In 2009, reporter Jerry Blizzen, who covered the research story in 1951, revisited the famous case, now armed with some additional details provided by the FBI. The FBI concluded that the fire had been started by Reeser's cigarette. Thank you for not smoking. Murder charge. Spontaneous human combustion may or may not be real, but it does have real-life consequences, including, in at least one case, keeping a suspected murderer out of jail. According to a Doctor's Review article, a woman named Nicole Millett, a notorious drunk, burned to death in her kitchen one night in 1725. Her husband was convicted of the murder and given a death sentence, but a physician named Claude Nicole Lacat convinced the court that Nicole spontaneously combusted. Most gullible judge ever? Yeah, we'll go with that. Political Fuel if you haven't noticed by now, alcohol plays a big role in spontaneous human combustion cases. In fact, the link between drinking and supposed cases of SHC was so well documented that, in 1799, a physician even listed which spirits were most likely to cause SHC. Bad science or not, the public association between alcohol and SHC fanned the fires of the temperance movement. Throughout the 1800s, prohibitionists used anecdotal accounts of spontaneous combustion to push the anti-alcohol agenda. Claiming that the easiest way to avoid exploding is to simply stop drinking is a pretty compelling argument after all. Spontaneous human combustion actually became one of the main arguments for temperance until roughly 1928. A modern problem. Don't be fooled. While the history of spontaneous human combustion is filled with pseudoscience, it still crops up in the modern age. A BBC article reports that in 2010, a 76-year-old man named Michael Faraday died at his home in Ireland. According to reports, he was burned to a crisp. 
Dr. Kieran McLaughlin, the coroner who handled Faraday's case, was baffled, left with a blank death certificate. McLaughlin only had one choice. He told the BBC, This fire was thoroughly investigated, and I'm left with the conclusion that this fits into the category of spontaneous human combustion, for which there is no adequate explanation. Was it really spontaneous combustion, or was McLaughlin simply out of options? We'll leave it to you to decide. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.